Hi, this is Goose, the producer of the RV Show USA, and you are in store for some great recorded content from the RV Show USA with your RV and wingman, Alan Warren. All right, we are halfway through the hour of information that will help you become a smarter RVer and a better RV buyer and a happy camper. Alan Warren, your RV wingman, with our go-to expert when it comes to the law, in particular involving RVs, Mr. Ron Burge. Where are you today, Ron? Las Vegas. Really? You working or playing? <laughs> I wish I was playing, but I've been working for the last couple of days here. <laughs> working, working, I've, man. So I've been to Vegas probably five, six times, and all but one of them was work. Wow. I guess as I know business is good as a lemon lawyer, RV lemon lawyer, business is good. Now, now we have got... We're going to be talking in our next segment about R-E-C-T and what it is, why it's important for people to understand, um, you know. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you, get some, get some um, I don't know how to say it, get some frank, honest feedback. Because I read many comments on social media from people that are upset at their RV, but a lot of these I'm going... I don't know if that's a lemon law case. I think it just uh, there's some isn't there some responsibility that the RV owner has to accept on their side and not just blame the manufacturer and the dealer for everything. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think there are some circumstances where that applies without any doubt. I mean, you got to know what you're buying and what it is that you you are getting into. So you got to be careful. And there are a lot of people who, who just buy the RV and they see problems as they're looking it over before they even sign the paperwork. And they, they just go right on through and accept it. And that's a real problem. Instead of going, uh, excuse me, I'm not going any further until we address this issue. Uh, is it because they just, they're trusting? They just trust that the dealer is going to go back and fix these little blemishes or even something bigger than a blemish? And they and then all of a sudden then they start griping when it was their responsibility to have it fixed before they took delivery. Or And I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I'm just trying to be honest. It's not always the dealer. It's not always the manufacturer. Oh, there's a lot of crappy stuff out there. But the, the, the buyer has to take some responsibility. There are times where the buyer has some responsibility. There's no question about that, I think. The the vast majority of the times, it isn't their fault. But the real problem is when they go to buy an RV and, and they don't hit the brakes, when they start seeing things that ought to be red flags in their face, that does happen at times. When you see a problem with with any aspect of the RV, what the buyer ought to do is they make a choice. Either they go on through, recognize what it is, and argue about it and get it dealt with, and handled right, or else walk away and go get another RV somewhere else, or else a different one on the lot. If you take the one that you see has got problems, that can end up being a legal problem for you. So uh, of all the lawsuits that are filed against dealers and manufacturers, and it, I don't know if there's a, ever a, a, you can know the real answer to this, but what percentage would you say are thrown out, maybe a waste of the RV owner's time and money? Half? More than half? No. Oh, no. Less than that. Uh, if you're talking about cases where it's thrown out without the consumer getting anything at all, just simply thrown out of court, um, then and, – and either that or they go through trial and they lose a trial. Those kinds of cases where they absolutely lose everything, that is the vast minority of cases that are filed. The majority of them get settled without ever going to trial. There, there's two tiny little chunks of them, if you will. One of those is the ones who actually go to trial at all, and most of those win, I think. But when you talk about the other small little group of cases, it's the ones where the court throws the case out or you lose a trial. It's not, it's not that tough to win a trial. It's just that there's a lot of roadblocks they throw in front of you that you and your attorney have got to work your way through to keep on a winning streak, and it, it can wear you down – uh, as a consumer, to have to just wait and wait for when you're finally going to get your day in court, because they do drag it out. You know, uh, we in our last segment, we had uh, Heather and Chris Gebbia, who had a, just a terrible yeah. experience with her heartland. And, and uh, you know, after six months, it sounds like they just said, you know what, it's, it's too much, it's taking too much of a toll on our family, and we're just going to accept our lumps. We don't like it, but we're going to move forward. And I, 
I admire them for being able to do that. But but if you're going to be in a lawsuit and go against a manufacturer, you better have some uh, you, you better have some intestinal fortitude and stick with it, don't you? Oh yeah, the, the people who actually come out ahead in a lawsuit are the ones that don't quit and don't give up and don't give in and instead stick it out for as absolute long as you can and if you have to and they make you do it then go into the courtroom and have a trial historically the people who come out more than anybody else are the ones who will go all the way i think the the rv companies depend on being able to drag you out and and wear you out all right ron hang on we're going to reconnect after the break for all our listeners Do you know what R-E-C-T stands for? It's important for you to know if you own an RV. It really is, and Ron Burge is going to tell you about it. I'm Alan Warren, your RV wingman. We'll be back right after this. All right, Ron Burge is with us. Ron is a lawyer who specializes in representing RV owners who have bought a lemon RV. His website is rvlemonlaw.com. We'll give it out again in a few minutes. So, Ron, one of the gripes we often hear from RVers is the amount of time it takes to get their RV back from a dealer, even for simple repairs. What do people need to know that can help them understand the why behind that? Well, first, let me tell you why I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in here on an RV that went into the shop, and it took seven months before it came out, and it only had 19 items going in, and most of them still weren't fixed by the time they got to the end of the day. Oh. Is that that's a good example why people need to know what we're going to talk about. Well, how, how does that go ahead. How, how does that happen? I mean, you buy an RV, my payments have to continue for the seven months it's at the dealer. Why can they not get these things fixed? Was it a, a, a an unusual RV that they only made one or two of, or what? No, they made lots of them. This one was made um, in Iowa. Uh, by one of the big three or four companies, depending on how you want to measure their output. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it was he bought it in April. It went into the shop in October, and it didn't come out at the earliest until May. And nobody is really even sure except the owner uh, when it did come out because it was still being worked on, according to all the paperwork. It was still being worked on by the time you got to the middle of the summer and into July. You know, and there's lots of excuses they give, and, and one of the most common ones is the parts supply system that the RV companies have set up. Explain that, please, if you would. Sure. Well, what, what the problem is that almost no RV dealers keep any supply of stock for any of the parts that go into an RV. And, and there's some logical good business reason for that. They can't stock all the parts that it takes to keep an RV on the road simply because there's so many different RVs and all of them have different parts in them. Some have the same parts supplied, but the problem is there's just so many and so much. So instead, the system has been set up where they have to order the parts they need to do a repair from the factory. And the problem is the factory doesn't keep hardly any either. They get them from suppliers. So you end up with a chain that you have to go through to get a part. And, And the supplier who actually makes those parts Their priority is not shipping parts to dealers who need them. It's shipping them to the manufacturer to build the next RV. So instead of sending one of whatever the widget is that needs to be replaced, they want to sell 500 of them to the factory. Sure. So their shipment, as far as they're concerned, the priority isn't mom and pop sitting out there at the dealership waiting for the part to arrive. It's the big factory that wants a whole bunch of them delivered so they can sell more RVs. So what is the R-E-C-T, and, and how do, why do I need to know about that? Uh, you need to know because before you walk into the dealer to have your repairs done on your RV, they already know how long you are likely to be in that shop. And the reason is because of this, the R-E-C-T. And actually, that's, that is just an, an acronym, and what it stands for is Repair Event Cycle Time. And what it means is, about how many days your RV is going to be sitting in their shop for one reason or another before it gets done and is sent back out of there, you can pick it up and take it home, and maybe everything will be fixed. Is that uh, and, uh, public information, or is that something that they keep you know, in the desk and don't let the public see unless you ask about it? Oh, it's in the desk, all right, and it may not even be any desk you can find, but it's there. Usually the service manager will know 
They're probably not going to willingly tell you, though. The owner of the operation will know, or else corporate, if it's a multi-dealer site, uh, the corporate will know, too, because they keep track of those numbers. In fact, they keep track of a whole lot more than that. So what's the solution to this, Ron? Because it, it, it does sound like a chain, a chain reaction, and, and uh, you, you can't blame the dealer for not stocking all the parts. They'd go broke having a giant warehouse of one of these and three of those. So you, can't, you can't blame the dealer and the manufacturer. They're making them so fast, they probably don't want to have any uh, leftover stock in their supply. I mean, how does it get that's, fixed? That's true. That's true, but they could. They've got the money, most certainly, to have a stock of some parts that they could ship out quickly, and they do, in fact, have some. But the problem is that there's a whole lot of different parts that they buy, all from suppliers, and that they don't actually make themselves. And once you get beyond that model year into the next model year, or heaven forbid, two or three down the road, and you try to find those parts, that's going to be a lot tougher. I think that that part of the solution is that as an RV owner, when you're going to take your RV into the shop, before you turn over the keys, you need to ask the service manager, what is your repair event cycle time? How long is my RV going to be here on average? They know what it is. It's a matter of whether or not they're willing to share it. And if they won't share it with you, then you need to worry a little bit or else plan on living at home for a while. What if they lie? I mean, can, you know, you ought to have it out of here in two or three weeks, and it turns into – like, in your case, seven <laughs> months in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, there's worse places to be, I suppose, but at the same time, this is where the poor fellow lives. But the bottom line of it is, how? Do, what do you do if they lie? There's not a lot you can do other than make notes of the fact that they said that it was going to be done in three weeks. And And a lot of people hear that about the parts. They're promised the parts are going to be delivered probably next week. Well, it's probably going to be next week now. It's probably going to be the first of the month. Mm. You can get strung on forever, and that is where you need to make a diary. You need to make a diary of what you say to them and what they say back to you so that you've got a record you can fall back on and you can point out, well, on this date, they told me it was only going to be another week because as sure as you make that diary, it just might only be another week. And as sure as you don't, seven months later, you'll be wishing you did. Yep, and you'll be hiring Ron Birch to represent you to go after him, that's for sure. So so you've got so many resources on your website. It, I mean, it, it's okay for us to throw that out there again, rvlemonlaw.com, right? Sure. I mean, because I guess you represent people from all different parts of the country, and uh, many of uh, the RVers' questions can be answered without even, even speaking with an attorney. Yeah, quite often that can be. Uh, a lot of times, though, it gets to the point where you really do need to. But for the most part, you can get a lot of information over the Internet, whether it's at my website or just digging around to find it. Uh, there's a lot of it out there, and most of it is pretty accurate. All right, well, we appreciate you very much for taking the time from your business trip out to Las Vegas. I want to get you on for an after-the-show show where we don't have to worry about these constraints of time clocks and all that kind of stuff we can open the phones up have people talk so can we do that soon i'd love to do that alan i'd love to and thanks for tonight too well you bet you take care and we'll talk again soon folks that was ron burge our badass rv lemon lawyer you check him out rv lemon i've got a closing monologue right after this